everyone thank you for tuning in i'm your instructor joy thank you very much for your continued support um your kind questions emails donations here also my patreon page booking lessons with me so uh, sending me supporting emails encouraging words kind comments questions all this means a lot to me thank you very very much so today this video will be an answer to a subscriber <laughs> this family was asking if I could make a video about Irish fiddle tune, bluegrass, or non-classical uh, genre, non-classical music. <laughs> it's a very good question. Um, even though I'm a classically trained violinist, uh, mainly um, my education is from Europe, but I have to admit I have a not so unfrequent uh, request about um, non-classical music repertoires and I do teach them um, I'm, I'm not an expert in a fiddle or grass bluegrass or uh, jazz music but the techniques are actually that if you do the techniques are a little different but a lot of things you can easily transfer and you can enjoy the other parts of music as well and I hope you can try that one so um, I thought I'll give you some, instead of me playing, <laughs> I'll show you some techniques that you can use such things. Such as, um, there's an um, Irish, rig, Irish uh, fiddle tune, there's something called a jig rhythm. It's basically, it's three, we're playing triplet, like, such as Irish washerwoman. So when you see that, there's a three note going on like that so now um often classical violinists when classical violinists play we were learned to play it, uh, with a full tone every time so we tend to overplay that one but actually when it comes to um fiddle tunes whether it's Irish fiddle tune um country style bluegrass jazz uh, one has to know to play a little lighter a little to let go of things so that involves first you don't have to use whole bows because <laughs> it's a fast stroke. It's not just uh, this this part. Also classical era, classical music. Uh, use the upper half bow instead of using one, two, three. What you do, you do first one very strong and two, three very little by just releasing the wrist again. One, two, three, and up bow. One, two, three. So it creates almost like you're doing one big down bow. And residue of that one, you create two tiny strokes like this. One, two, three. And the same thing up. Because the odd number, such as three, it does not sit well with us. So we, we tend to, like, we'd like to make it four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So in order to keep the three rhythm, what you do is you do accent. Accent. With the help of gravity, down bow is easier, as you know. But up bow, we need to give a little more, a little more access. So I would do a little more than usual here. Yeah, and then you can play in jig like a uh, rich washerwoman. And then once you feel comfortable, then you speed up a bit, staying there. And then the key of being fast is is that you have to do when to use short bow. So first one long. Second and third short, first one long, second and short. On and on like that. Next one, um, swing rhythm or hornpipe in the Irish or Philippines, or swing rhythm in the terms of jazz music and bluegrass is something that um, a lot of classical violinists have a hard time to play because we don't play as it's written so when, once you approach non-classical music it's important to be open-minded <laughs> remember um, they approach music very differently and they also frequently improvise and it's important when you when you change from one genre to the next type of music make sure you adapt that one and be a little open-minded and so when you see the music you will see straight to eighth note one after the other which would be let's say the music is written but when it's hornpipe or swing rhythm it would be played yeah so which means first one is long second one is short 
long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. Yeah, but it only works when it's two equal eighth notes. When you have a triplet, it plays as the same even. Again, when you have a two eighth note, the first one is always long, second one is short. Yeah, this is called um, swing. So when you, let's say you join a band uh, or you're playing an ensemble where you play jazz or bluegrass or fiddle, let's say, and everybody say, okay, next tune, let's swing. And you may see that straight eighth note, but then if you know what the swing rhythm is, you would know the first one is long and second one would be short. In Irish fiddle tune, they call it hornpipe rhythm, which is also play the first one is long. <laughs> So, uh, number three, the next one, um, a lot of ornaments, so it's, now we're talking about the left hand technique. Ornaments are encouraged and it's up to you. Um, so you are free to do. The common ornament is a mordant note. Mordant note is one note, word additional, one additional very fast note. It could be before and after or just um, like, um, so, so more than mark is actually zigzag like that in classical term, but that may or may not be same when you see the music of jazz, jazz musician band or um, in a fiddle group or any different style. But basically what it is, let's say when you have one note here, more than would be, or some, the other one would be, then that's often that it's not always one note above. Um, or sometimes you, you do a little turn, you go one note above or one more note below. Yeah? Or sometimes a little sliding, a little glissando. Yeah? Um, there are many things like that. So I just play here. Do I have to play again? That would be. This is one of one, and you can make up your own thing. I did instead. I did. Or I did by the one, not this one. Or on and on like that. You can do many things <laughs> and have fun. As long as you're with a rhythmically rhythmic structure, uh, with the rhythmic structure, you'll be just fine. Um, another one, double stops. It's um, left and right hand technique. Nice thing about um, non-classical music, um, you can just make up your own music, improvise, and that comes making your own harmony. So. Um, the very good example would be use your open string as a um, as a double stop. So let's see if I want to play a melody like this. Then instead of this one, what I'm gonna do while I play G string, I'm gonna play open D along. And while I'm playing G string, I'm gonna play D strong. Along. So the melody was, but because I'm adding open string next on D and G, it sounds a little fuller. Yeah, it sounds cooler too. And then the, another one. Also here. When I play this one, I can add my open G. That way my string sounds fuller and fancier. <laughs> Also here, and then if I play the whole thing together with the open street right, ne right next to each other, it's not necessarily harder to play because I'm just playing the next string without placing the finger. I just have to adjust my bow. But to the audience, it sounds as though I play very fancy stuff, which is really cool. Like. <laughs> Like that. Of course, there are much more things to do that one, but I thought these are the commonly used and then that you can always apply in many different non-classical genres. 
yeah i hope you can have fun i hope it gave you some ideas and i hope this video was helpful to you and i wish you all happy violin playing and hope to see you again bye bye